Hey everybody, uh, I'm going to show you how to dual boot Windows XP and Linux if you've already installed Linux first. Uh, I found myself in that situation when I installed Linux, thought I wasn't going to use Windows anymore, and then realized later after I uninstalled Windows that uh, there are some programs I need to run that just won't run in Linux. There's no native equivalent, and there's you can't run it in one. So, uh, so I had to figure out the hard way how to install Windows XP um, after, you know, dual booted with Linux after I already installed Linux. Uh, but I found a really easy way in all my research. So, uh, actually not research, more like just playing around on the computer. Um, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So I'm going to do this in a virtual box now. So you can see right here I've got Linux running in the virtual box. So we know it boots up. Um, so the first thing we need to do is boot from a CD that uh, can run gparted, that has, you know, gparted as part of the uh, boot CD, and you can modify partitions. Because the first thing we have to do is make space for Windows. Um, so we're going to search for zoom out there. I'm going to search for the System Rescue CD. If you uh, don't already have a boot CD that's got cheap parted on it, any Linux based boot CD, um, then this one's a nice small download. So we're going to search it on Google. Go to sysrescd.org or you can click the download link. But uh, I want people to be able to see the address of the actual website main page. Okay, so we're going to go to download. I know uh, Windows XP might be a little obsolete, so this might be a little bit of an obsolete tutorial, but people still use it and it's good to know. Alright, uh, SourceForge download for the stable release. Stable. And sorry, my internet's going a little bit slow. Download will start in a couple seconds. And then it should prompt us to save the file. And there it is. Now, I don't need to save it because I already have a copy. But uh, for those of you doing this for the first time, you save the file and then choose to burn an image in your CD burning software and uh, choose this file. Then you'll need to boot from the CD. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, VirtualBox. If anybody wants to test it out in VirtualBox before they actually uh, do the real procedure, then I'll show you how to do that. Zoom in there. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. All right. uh, devices and then I've already got it in here but normally you go to choose a virtual CD slash DVD uh, disk file and then point it to that system rescue CD file that you downloaded um, alright now I'm just gonna do a hard reset on the machine <laughs> and then here we just hit enter for the first option like I'm gonna hit enter for the default that would be English um, and let it rip and by the way um, this is gonna be a very easy thing to do there's there's a tutorial out there that shows people how to do this and uh, well actually how to not what I'm showing you exactly it shows you how to dual boot XP with Linux after you installed Linux first but it seems a bit old and uh, a little overly complicated and things are really extremely easy to do now so you'll see exactly how much easier it can be um, so at this screen we're gonna type start X hit enter S-T-A-R-T-X 
and uh, that'll take us into the graphical interface and the easiest way for me right now to run gparted is just type gparted right in this window and hit enter I'm also having some problems with my cursors uh, when I record the screen you can see there's two cursors now um, that doesn't happen when I'm not recording my screen but I just gotta deal with it okay so here's my Linux hard drive um, 11 gigabytes so what we need to do is right click it and resize it make sure it's your ext4 partition um, most likely you're only gonna have one um, so it's gonna be that one it should also have a boot flag there that's definitely your uh, your main drive but we're gonna right click it and go to resize slash move and we're gonna resize it for me I'm gonna make it so I have about uh, that should be about five gigabytes of free space maybe a little more but that's that's fine for what I'm doing um, and click resize now it hasn't done anything yet it's just queuing up the jobs um, but it hasn't performed them yet so now the biggest difference between this and um, the tutorial that I found was that they tell you not to create any partitions here that you leave this space unallocated and then the Windows XP installation is where you create the um, the partition but that gives you the problem of it will only recognize it as drive D because when you go into the Windows installation if we left the setup just like this it won't see any NTFS partitions which is a Windows partition so it's going to see that Linux partition as drive C and then the uh, the swap partition I think it might see as drive D or drive E or something um, but the simple way to fix that is create the partition here we're going to do the windows partition that is we're going to create a new partition um, fill in the space this is the exact size of the unallocated space we're going to choose NTFS whoops sorry I don't know what happened there uh, oh, my mouse is all messed up okay NTFS and click add so now, um, so that's it. Uh, we're going to click apply. And you'll see later that when the Windows installation sees the partitions, it's going to see that NTFS partition as drive C. It doesn't actually need to know that anything's on the partition at all. It just needs to know that it's a partition that's NTFS. So now, that there's a Windows partition that takes precedence and that will actually be seen as drive C over all these other unrecognizable drives and that didn't take too long so that's good um, for some people depending on how much data you have and how big the hard drive is and stuff it might take longer okay so now that is the first step so I'm going to X out of there, and I need to zoom out. So we can just shut this system down now, log out, and to shut it down you can do uh, shut down now, or if you need to restart it, do shut down space dash R now, I'll zoom in. what the command should look like but uh, I'm gonna just do shut down because I need to whoops shut down now because I need to get a Windows CD I don't believe I have an ISO Now I'm going to put in the Windows CD. We're ready to install Windows. 
and you should see that when we boot into Windows, um, I don't know why this isn't shutting off for me. Let me try that again. Okay, so now I've got my Windows CD inserted, so we run, we start the computer, and, uh, let's see, um, host drive. If you're doing it from VirtualBox, you will want to choose the host drive, not a, not a, well, if you have an ISO, you can choose an ISO, but you can put in your Windows CD and, uh, choose devices, host drive, that'll, that'll send your uh, CD drive, your actual computer CD drive to the virtual machine. So now when I restart, machine reset, I'm going to press any key to boot from the CD. After this, um, there is one more thing we'll have to do after we install Windows because what happens now is Windows is going to overwrite the the bootloader that Linux comes with, and so you're gonna it'll still be there. All your data will still be there. It's just that uh, you won't be able to choose to boot into Linux, and there's a really easy fix for that too. It used to be more complicated to do that. Now it's extremely easy with a boot CD, which I'll show you how to do. Okay, so now uh, here's the Windows installation. We're going to press Enter to install Windows. Press F8. And here's the part where I was mentioning that it sees the Linux partitions as ENF now, but sometimes, you know, it could be different for you. Um, now, if we had just left unallocated space and not had created that NTFS partition before um, this partition would prob partition one would probably be drive C and then this one which is swap would probably have been drive E I believe for whatever reason and uh, and then if you wanted to create a partition to install Windows on it would uh, force you to use drive letter D which honestly is not the greatest and not every application is compatible with that so it's better just to have it on drive D or uh, drive C especially with Windows XP so we have our NTFS partition it recognizes it as drive C like we wanted it to so now we're going to press enter to install okay and then it gives us this message and that's fine, it's just, it's a little bit quirky because it doesn't quite recognize that partition, but as long as it's drive C, it doesn't matter because we're going to format it. So, I'm going to do quick NTFS, just because uh, I don't really actually need this OS, so I'm going to try to get through it as fast as I can. So, uh, we're going to press F for format, and this is done... This installation with Windows is uh, Service Pack 2 Windows XP Professional Disk. Um, so just be aware there might be minor differences depending on what Windows XP disk you're using. Okay, 
So we're starting the installation and there's really not much for me to show you here. This is just doing a Windows installation as you normally would. Um, so I'm going to cut the video here and I'll come back to it uh, after everything's installed and I'll show you how to get your um, bootloader back so you can choose between Windows and Linux. That'll be the last um, that'll be the last step. Just keep in mind that this isn't erasing your Linux partitions or your data in Linux. This is just installing Windows and taking away the choice to boot from Linux. But we're gonna get that choice back after uh, after this is done installing. So stick around for part two. Okay, so I just finished my Windows XP installation um, that we left off on part one. Now, before I show you how to just finish up this whole going back to dual boot with Windows and uh, Windows and Linux, um, let me just show you what it looks like now. Uh, when we restart, you're gonna see no sign that <laughs> Linux was ever even installed. rebooting and this is what we get. You would never even know that the uh, Linux operating system ever existed on this machine at all unless you looked at the hard drive. But So that's what we're going to fix. You're going to get a menu that lets you choose either Windows or Linux. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is get a CD called the boot repair disk. Um, now I already opened it in my browser actually uh, this is the site that I got it from. I actually stumbled on it from, I use Ubuntu, and uh, I was on their website looking at how to repair uh, the bootloader, and they had, they referenced this CD, and so this is the link it gave me. <coughs> so you can just, I'll leave this up for a second so you'll be able to jot it down. Let me just get that on the screen here for you um, and then so that's the website you want to go to and then you just go down here to the boot repair disk ISO and uh, click on it and save it which I don't need to do I already have it and then you burn it to a CD just like you did with the system rescue CD and then so I'm going to close that out and in VirtualBox here, I'm going to put the, I'm going to attach this boot repair disk. And all right, so now I'm going to restart the system. Those two arrows are confusing me. <laughs> So we're going to boot from that disk. It, what it's going to do is automatically repair the um, the master boot record for us, and it's going to reinstall Grub. So the great thing about this disk is uh, if you have 32-bit, if you have a 32-bit processor or 64, you can do either one, and you do need to choose the right one. I actually what I tried to do originally was just use an Ubuntu live CD and uh, and then install the boot repair but um, I was having problems with the the difference between is giving me errors about 32 bit and 64 bit so the easiest way is just to get this disk choose the right one so for me I think it's 32 bit for my virtual box if not I'll go back and choose 64 <coughs> and then it'll just reinstall Grub for us, which is the bootloader for Linux, and it'll also uh, let you choose Windows from that bootloader, whereas the Windows standard bootloader does not let you choose Linux, because they don't care about it. <laughs> <coughs> okay, and then you get this screen. Right from the boot, you'll uh, 
get this window that pops up and so we'll just wait for that <coughs> And if you make it this far, then uh, you won't be getting any error messages about the operating system needing to be, or having to run the 64-bit version of the program. Or 32-bit. Okay. So, let's see. If we go to advanced options, we're going to go to... Um, we want to reinstall Grub. We want to unhide the boot menu. We want to reinstall or restore. Or actually, um, no, we don't want to restore the NBR. We want to reinstall Grub. Um, and then that's it. Unhide the boot menu. And then here you can choose the timeout, how long the boot menu will stay on the list. Uh, before it automatically chooses the default operating system. I don't really have to do this, but my preference would probably be 5 seconds, not 10. Um, and then that's it. We're going to click Apply. And it's going to do its thing, and this way you don't have to memorize all these commands and you know, not everybody is going to be savvy with reinstalling Grub manually. I'm certainly not. So, it was good that I found a utility that knows how to do this stuff all for you automatically. And you can get it as a standalone program also, um, not just an entire boot CD, but the boot CD seems to be the most logical option. Um, because you'll have to boot into some other live environment anyway. And uh, since this lets you choose 64 and 32 bit, and that actually does make a difference um, for whether you're able to run it or not, might as well just get the disk. Works better. And then, uh, so here we've got the program hopefully doing everything correctly. Without errors or problems. It should be done soon. You don't have to create the uh, boot info summary. Uh, I probably should have unchecked it, but eh, sometimes it's good to see what the summary is going to say. Although I don't know if it actually displays it automatically. Okay, well, either way, it's finished. So let's go to log out. And I'm going to do shutdown just so I can get a chance to go up here and remove the uh, CD from my virtual machine. Which actually, it looks like it did it already. Okay. machine again or if you're using a real computer just reboot it and okay I don't know why that's there sorry okay reset and what we should have hopefully ah exactly we've got the list that lets us choose either Linux or Windows this is pretty much what it would have looked like if um, you installed uh, if you had Windows installed first and then dual booted Linux with it. Um, if you got a menu it looks similar to this with the menu options give or take some wallpaper setups or whatever customizations the distribution you were using would have done to the uh, login screen or the boot screen. But So let's test it. First let's do Windows XP. Okay, good. Now I'm not even going to stick around. I don't want to really. Oh, that booted up quick. I'll just do it this way then. Restart. 
And then we'll see how, uh, hopefully the Linux one will boot up as well. And here we are at five seconds. Um, once you move this around, the selection around, the time limit goes away. Alright, Linux Mint 12, that's the release candidate number one. Which is very good, by the way, if you're looking for uh, a GNOME 3 Ubuntu-based distribution, definitely get uh, Linux Mint 12. It's not officially released yet, but the release candidate is very promising. And so now, all I have to do is hope that it worked, and it worked perfectly. So, that's way easier than having to memorize the commands to try to reinstall Grub. And if you're installing it on the right device, you just use the uh, the boot repair disk and you're set. Um, so hopefully this was informative for anyone who installed Linux and then decided that they need Windows XP back for whatever reason. Um, so that's the easiest way and it's pretty quick too. So. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you, and enjoy your new dual boot system.